Hey, what's going on guys? This is Mike from Obox, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to use the Puppet Tool, which is a pretty neat tool that I've just only recently started using. It was something I actually didn't even know about. It was uh, kind of hidden away. So I'm going to just sh kind of show you what it is, kind of how it works, and uh, you could probably create some really cool stuff. I actually created a bunch of letters with kind of some gushy effects that uh, I might have up for sale um, for use in After Effects. Just let me know if that'd be something that you would maybe even be interesting, interested in, and if so, um, what exactly you would go for um, in terms of price. You know, it obviously has to be a price that makes sense. So we're just gonna go ahead and open up um, After Effects, create a new, uh, a new composition, tutorial, I believe this is 10 at this point. Um, we'll bring this to maybe 10 seconds. 10 second composition is probably good. Um, frames a second, we'll go to 59.94, 1080p, looks good to me. So we'll create a new layer. This will be just be the background. And uh, we'll maybe have a, what color looks good? Maybe a kind of a dark blue like that. So, um, actually, let's also lock this layer too. Whoa, okay. Just lock the layer just so I can't pull it and drag it. So, uh, the Puppet Tool is listed up here. It's this little pin. It's called Puppet Pin Tool. And I'll just kind of show you, um, I'll show you exactly kind of what it can do. I'm just going to create a letter here. Now, uh, again, this is just going to kind of be a showcase, a tool showcase, not necessarily a, um, a tutorial on exactly how to do something. So I just centered this object. I'm going to scale it up, press S on the keyboard, scale it up. If I hold control, it scales more slowly. Um, so I have this C here. And if you want to make this thing move, you have the choice of rotating it. You could change the position. Um, you could change the scale. You could change the opacity. And that's kind of it. But if you want to actually, if you want to actually make it so this little part of the C is bent, you would have to right click go to create shapes from text and and now you have a I guess paths so now like okay so I I could I could affect this C in different ways and I can create keyframes and make it move but it's still kind of it's too modular so before it was too it was too uh, too wholesome and now it's like too modular so I can't really make this part of this if I want to make this part of the C kind of augment I would have to you know make it try to make it as perfect as possible and you know it's pretty difficult to actually to actually move these things around and make it work so uh, what I could do here is I'll, I'll just do it from this but I believe I could also do it on, on the on the actual um, if this was a text layer you could also do this but if I come up here and click this puppet tool and I click points on this object it creates pins in which I could I can drag and move the object so I just created some some pins in the logical joint locations. I might even actually want to put one here. And notice here that it breaks up the shape into little triangles. And you could change the resolution of these triangles. Um, if I press U on the keyboard, it'll show me all my keyframes. It, it creates keyframes for these, by the way. Um, so it opens up the, the puppet tool and the mesh over here is I could actually increase the amount of triangles. I could increase the, um, the, the expansion of the triangles. And basically what that does is um, it it it's determines how how sharp I want this C to be and and how far this C expands um, out into space around the object. So I'm just gonna kind of back out of that expansion. Um, that probably looks good. Did I create an extra puppet pin? No. So um, the more the more triangles you put, the higher resolution, but the the more CPU it uses. So what I could do now here is I can grab this point. And I could pull and, and morph the object. Now, because there's a pin there, it, it, it kind of holds on, um, and you kind of have some limit to, to kind of how how much you could how much you can you can morph the object. But essentially, um, you can morph this in any way you'd like. So, if I go back to how it originally was, I can at one second I can create keyframes, um, which it already did. But I'll just create some new keyframes and delete the old ones. And I'll say at two seconds, I want this C to kind of um, almost open up, you know, like like it's it's being aggressive or something. And and you could do that. Um, another cool thing that I like to do is uh, I like whoa, what's going on? I don't like. That. Oh, there it is. Is I'll just drag these keyframes over here, and now I could make it so this C is is shut, you know, like like almost as if it's you know 
I guess, how, how do I, how would I explain this? As if it's like pinned shut or something. And there are ways to kind of, to kind of morph this together better. But I, I could say at this point, it's still pinned. At this point, it's still pinned. And then I'll delete those keyframes. And then I'll say at this point, well, maybe I'll, I mean, again, you, you, you could mess with this however, however you want. So it almost kind of looks like, like this object is, is, is pinned shut like that. And so it almost looks like it's trying to open and then maybe this now pops and it kind of snaps back kind of over exaggerated, you know, so you could do all kinds of things like that. And then you would obviously want to put it back into place. So uh, something that I noticed is that you always want to keep the initial shape of the object. Because if you don't, um, it's kind of hard to get it back into its original shape. You see here it's kind of morphed. So it's always a good idea to create keyframes of the original object. So for example, um, before I deleted these keyframes, I should have probably copied them and pasted them. Um, or I'll just move them, move them back here. And so that way, you know, as I, as I create this, this motion, um, I, I could return back, I could return back to the, to the initial, um, the initial shape. And so you just might want to add some wiggling. And again, how you do this is kind of up to you, you know, whatever you need this tool for, um, it's just kind of, I'm just showcasing that this tool exists and that you can mess with it. So that might not be exactly what you're looking for, but I mean, you can mess with the keyframes and kind of get it, get it to a better shape. Now, let me show you something that I noticed um, that this tool is kind of a little bit weak at. So I'm just going to delete these keyframes. Let's say I want this C to have a position keyframe and then I want it to move, let's say, um, across there like that. If I create these puppet uh, keyframes and I say, for example, I want, I want these to move, it kind of, it kind of keeps the points ex in the singular location, you know, the, the center of the object. So um, you'll notice that, that this will look very strange. It just doesn't really work. Um, that might be an effect you're looking for, but, it, but it's not really what I'm looking for. Um, it kind of just gives you something different. So what you would have to do is you would have to, um, you'd have to change the, the P keyframe, delete those, um, pre-comp this, control, control shift C or command um, option C, I believe. And then in here, you would have to make the object kind of move and go crazy like that. Um, and then in here, you would have to make it move. So if I created the keyframe there and then moved it. So that, that's how you would have to do that. And then you have to line up the keyframes. So that's kind of really the only thing um, about this that uh, is, is kind of a downer. But anyways, that's the puppet tool. I hope you found this useful. Um, if you create something with a puppet tool, be sure to leave a comment down in the description. I'll check it out. Anyways, guys, it's been Mike. Thanks for watching.